So you're thinking about moving to Long Island or even just visiting Long Island. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of Long Island in general. And in this series, we're gonna be breaking down the different towns, cities, and villages that we're gonna be visiting, going through um, the different pros and cons of those specific areas. So you can get a feel of which areas could be right for you if you're moving there, or if you just wanna visit those, those specific places, you can reference those videos that will be in the links in the description below as we create those videos and put them out. So consider subscribing to this new channel that will keep you informed about the different areas about Long Island and the pros and cons, different aspects like cost of living, and in this video, we're gonna just break down some key pros and cons about Long Island in general, which are coming up right now. Starting with the pros, we're gonna talk about the fact that number one, living on Long Island is close to New York City. Now, why is that a pro? Well, living on Long Island, you do have a lot more space uh, living in a house on Long Island than you would living in the city. Meaning you would have a lot more backyard space, you could have a pool, you can invite your friends and family there and you can accommodate a lot of guests. Now, living in the city most of the time, it, the space is somewhat limited. It's very uh, congested, it can be very noisy and maybe that's not a lifestyle that you want. So living on Long Island and being able to visit the city and do all the fun activities in the city that you can get like visiting different museums, or going to concerts and visiting all the different restaurants and fun places to go um, in, in the different parts of New York City is a great way to experience the city without having to actually live there. So that's pro number one is living close to New York City. Pro number two is the variety of beaches on Long Island. Now there are, are so many different beaches you can go to on Long Island, but just to touch on beaches that are available in the North Shore versus the South Shore. Uh, in the North Shore, the, the beaches and the water is uh, it's a lot more calm. And um, because of that, most of the time when you're visiting the beaches, even just by me, which is, there's a beach called Tabins Beach across the street, most of the time I go there just to, to lounge out. There's, there's a beach bar across the street and sometimes I'll grab some food and just lay out with, uh, with some friends over there. But typically if we wanna go and swim, uh, we like to go over to the South Shore, which is beaches like Jones Beach and Robert Moses because it's just a little bit, little bit more fun. There's more waves, uh, the water's a bit more clean. <laughs> so that's definitely one of the reasons I like to go over there and, uh, and just have some fun during the summer and, and be able to actually go in the water and just have a good time. So pro number three are the different nature preserves parks and botanical gardens that are available here on Long Island. Now, why is this a pro? Well, there are just so many different varieties of parks, nature preserves, and you know, also botanical gardens that you can visit. And one of the things that's so nice about this is that you, you can choose you know, basically every weekend to go to a different place on Long Island and experience something different. So you can go there, uh, you can go to a botanical garden one weekend and you can visit the greenhouses and you can have a picnic out there with your friends and family. And then you can go another weekend with, to a nature preserve and go hiking and go through different locations within that nature preserve. There's some history that you can um, really learn about from some of the nature preserves. And Long Island is surrounded by beaches, so some of these preserves are surrounded by beaches. Same with the parks. So even as you go through these trails, sometimes you end up on some beaches. And the nice thing about being at these preserves is that you, always, you can always experience something new, find something new, um, learn about a new trail uh, pretty much every weekend and something that I still like to do. And, uh, and the parks um, are great as well just because there's uh, a lot of stuff for kids to do. I mean, there's like different playgrounds in these parks. There's barbecues usually set up for your friends and family to be, be able to just have a nice, nice lunch and be able to hang out with friends and family there and just include everybody there and just have some activities for, your, for, their, uh, for their kids as well. So definitely great, um, great places to visit during the summer and spring. Um, in the fall, you need to bundle up a little bit. In the winter time, they're not used as much but um, definitely uh, throughout the three seasons out of the four, they're utilized um, quite a lot. Pro number four is the community events. There's a ton of different community events that happen on Long Island. Just to name a few are some car shows, 
concerts that you can go to, and just overall general events that are just really, really uh, great to be a part of. One that I could just think of off the top of my head that just comes to mind is the Oyster Fest located in Oyster Bay. That event is a really big event that happens once a year and it draws a lot of traffic, not even just from Long Island itself, but even from Connecticut and just different parts of New York. Um, as well that just draw in a just wide variety of people to eat some of the the food that you don't normally get to eat on a yearly basis drink some of the the drinks that you don't get to drink on a normal normal basis and just get together with friends and family walk around all over the town of Oyster Bay and just experience a lot of great food a lot of great times that's just one event that I can think of um, that has a lot of people attending some of the smaller events are like concerts that are held in, um, in Glen Cove no, in the downtown sounds which they close off some of the streets and people are able to uh, bring, bring out um, lounge chairs to sit in the middle of the street and have like one big community concert which is really cool and um, that that's a little bit more frequent and then some of the other events that are, are held year-round are uh, in small villages even in, in Seacliff there's one called Mini Mart and that's a really cool one because it's a little bit more tight uh, knit community in, in Seacliff and um, people can come from all over and, and, and visit visit that event as well um, but the cool thing about that event is there's a lot of local businesses and artisans showcasing some of their products and services and connecting with the community and you just get a really good feel of what the community is really about at these events and how people are truly connected with each other and that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great time to um, get connected with people and start developing relationships within your community and just having a lot of fun. All right, last but not least, pro number five is the food. Now, Long Island is full of diversity and different ethnicities. It's basically a melting pot of different cultures. And because of that, the food is amazing on Long Island. There's tons of different variety. Um, just to name a few is like Japanese food, Chinese, halal food, uh, American food, obviously. Um, they have Greek food. Uh, this is pretty much anything that you can think of, think of Thai food, um, that's just to name a few, right? But some of the, the staples when it comes to food on Long Island is the bread, right? So uh, that could be the bagels, the pizza, the pastas, all that type of stuff is just really well known on Long Island because, well, we're known for the best bagels on Long Island, we're known for the best pizza on Long Island, and one I really have to mention because this is just a funny one, um, we have the best bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwiches on Long Island. I've had friends and family that have grown up here, have moved away, and then called me saying they need to come back because they miss our bacon, egg, and cheeses, and that they're crying that they need to come back and maybe even move back here altogether because they just can't get a good breakfast sandwich anywhere, and especially the bacon, egg, and cheeses. So uh, the food is probably one of the best pros on Long Island, and if you haven't tried it yet, man, are you missing out. On to the cons. Con number one about living on Long Island is the traffic. So whether you're coming into Long Island or exiting Long Island, the traffic is going to suck. It's just plain and simple. Um, if you're commuting to work, especially if you're commuting out east or to the city, traffic is gonna be congested. It's most likely gonna be bumper to bumper. And um, especially when you leave uh, your job, if you, especially if you're working a nine to five when most people work, and you're leaving around those hours. Traffic is simply just not the best on Long Island. It's definitely better than the city, but it's uh, it's definitely uh, not that much better either. So traffic is definitely one of the cons. All right, so the next couple cons are related to each other. So con number two has to do with property taxes on Long Island. Now, it's no secret that on Long Island that it's probably one of the most expensive places to live. And property taxes are no different, but it has a lot to do with the location that you're going to live in, the amount of land that your property sits on, and these are all things that you want to consider when purchasing a property on Long Island. Some people want less land on their property just to have less upkeep and potentially less taxes on their property. So those are some things you should consider if you're thinking about buying a property on Long Island. Um, but in general, taxes are pretty high on Long Island. Now that's con number two. Going into con number three, which is it's pretty difficult for first time home buyers right now to purchase a property on Long Island. And there's a few different reasons. Um, one of the reasons that we just spoke about, which was property taxes, but there's a few other reasons as well. One, one of the other reasons that, has to, um, that makes it difficult for first time home buyers to buy a property right now 
is the lack of inventory. Now, the inventory is starting to uh, increase a bit at the moment, but the reason why lack of inventory is causing issues is um, it, it's lack of inventory and it's also low interest rates. Now, because low interest rates um, are a good thing for buyers, it floods the market with a lot of buyers. And that includes uh, people that are not first time home buyers, that are even people from the city that maybe want to leave the city and come to a suburban area. And these people have more money generally, generally than the first time home buyers on Long Island. And usually they, ha they have uh, more people that are, are offering all cash on these properties. So there's some bidding wars going on right now on some properties and it's making it very difficult for first time home buyers that don't have a lot of money to put down that can't bid over asking price on some of these properties to actually enter in their first dream home and be able to purchase their first property. So con number three would be being a first time home buyer on Long Island is very difficult right now. Uh, segueing into con number four. Uh, con number four has to do with the amount of property that you actually get on Long Island compared to other states. Now, um, the minimum uh, price point on Long Island kind of varies a bit, but it, let's just say it's around $400,000. Um, and that could even increase just based on the bidding wars that are happening right now. But if you were to buy a property around like 400, between 400 and $500,000 um, here on Long Island, you know, that could get you maybe a two bedroom or a three bedroom, two bath, or maybe, maybe, maybe a four bedroom, but that's very rare. If you were to do that to, uh, to purchase a property in another state, even in like North Carolina or something like that, a $400,000 house would easily get you a four to five bedroom home with quite a bit of land. And um, you're just gonna be able to purchase a lot more property in other states. So that is a con that you uh, that you kind of sacrifice with living on Long Island, but um, you know it, that's that's one of the things you have to expect with living here. So uh, moving on to con number five, which is it's kind of a pro and a con. It kind of just depends on what you like. Um, I would say you know it just depends on you, but uh, the 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 way I think of this as a con is that there's a lot of older homes on Long Island and. Um, that could be a pro to some people because a lot of these homes are not being built in this way uh, anymore compared to some of the new construction that is um, developing on Long Island. Um, they're not building these homes in that way anymore. So you might have uh, a home that is just a little bit more unique. Um, so that could be a pro to some people. But the reason why I consider it a con is um, because there could be a lot of uh, foundational issues. There could be uh, you know issues with leaking in basements. Um, issues with the roofs um, so you know a lot of a lot of different issues that can come with older homes and that's why I, I consider it a con but um, just you know to each their own it could be a pro to you so if you don't know already I am a real estate agent here on Long Island so if you have any needs to buy or sell real estate on Long Island you can reach out to me there should be some contact info somewhere on the screen or even in the description below you should be able to reach out to me potentially even schedule a Zoom meeting if that's easier for you so we can meet online, discuss your needs, and go from there. So there you have it guys. Those are my five pros, my five cons of living on Long Island. If you like this video, give me a like and subscribe to the channel for future content that we're gonna be producing that has everything to do with the different towns, cities, and villages, and us going more in depth into all these different areas so you can get a better feel of what it's like to live in these areas, visit these areas, whatever you're looking to accomplish. That's why we're creating this content for you guys. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.